Yeah, you're spot on. Well, Stanley played his first game back last night. You got Jenkins. I thought he was pretty good, reckon, Stanley. Yeah. He was. And I reckon Darcy Fort was going okay too. They were very happy with him and he's out with a, a foot fracture. So they've got, they got a few there. What was interesting last night, I don't know why Dangerfield played, Damo. It, they rested mm. him for 90% of the game. I'm not sure. Yeah. Him and Joel both looked either sore or just um, tired. Yeah, look, look. obviously the way they played Dangerfield, Bill, mainly up forward until that sort of requirement to get him in the middle late in the piece, just to stem the flow a little bit. Um, it was almost as, a, as an, a, an insurance pack possibility, wasn't even playing, if they needed him, if things had gone haywire. And look, they might have gone haywire a little bit if, if North was able to capitalise what it was doing early. They couldn't. I mean, Ben Brown uh, started the game having missed last week and... As we know, injured his knee early in the game, didn't return. As we speak this afternoon, it's um, it's more encouraging, though, for Ben Brown than it uh, may have been thought to have been last night after the game. It's it's hopeful now, um, yet to be signed off on officially, but hopeful that it's uh, it's not that serious and that he, uh, at, at worst, might only miss a, a few games. Where's he at, Ben Brown? Because he was going to sign a four-year deal, I believe, Damo, at North Melbourne. Now, yep. he, is he going to be at North Melbourne? I can't see him being there, Bill. Um, the fact Ooh. that they pushed back even before the COVID-19 shutdown on the on the offer from North. The offer from North was three years, effectively the same monetary um, attachments to the deal, but he wanted a four-year deal. And, and as we know, that that's his right. That's the club's right. But the whole um, unknown at that stage was what was going to happen uh, in this year, and that is COVID-19. Um, his currency's plummeted. I'm, mm. You hate to say it. For a guy who's the only player in the competition who – had managed to kick 60-plus goals in the previous three seasons, uh, now out of contract. And just the noises around it, Jim and, and Bill, uh, Adam Ramanaskis is not one to ever, really, that I can recall, stay say too much publicly. He, he's his manager. And he was quite open today, I think it was ABC Radio, just saying, well, no, no, we, we, we can't sign now. There's nothing in front of us. And and it's obviously now a, a very much an unknown situation. And I felt now for a couple of weeks, Bill, that he, he would not be at North next year, just the way Jeez. it's unfolded. And... Look, then becomes, what is he worth? Um, he's not a free agent, so the club that wants him will have to cough up the draft pick. And I'm thinking, Jim, you, you tell me, I'm, I'm thinking it's uh, at best for North, uh, about a pick you know, early in the early 20s, maybe even late 20s. North will want more than that, but I think that's about the right currency for him right now. Well, they'll definitely want more than that. They'll want sort of bottom half of the first round, I reckon, for a, a key forward of that quality. Whether they get it or not, I don't know. Yep. There's A couple of things haven't worked for him, uh, Purple. Firstly, you know, the the issues we had with this season um, has meant that all contracts, as I understand it, pretty much across the board have gone off the table. So when Adam Ramanaskis says we've got nothing in front of us, no managers have got anything in front of them until we work out cer certainly what the cap looks like going forward and also list sizes. So th that hasn't worked for him. But secondly, the shortened quarters mean that defensive running is happening more in footy now than it ever has. So all the big forwards are battling. I mean, yeah, Big Chaz uh, Dixon's going pretty well and Kennedy, but their sides are going really well. But so many players are now flooding back because of the shortened quarters and the, you know, the, the, the ability to run harder. So I think there's a couple of things that have worked against him, but um, going down early in the game last night didn't help. North had their backs to the wall anyway and suddenly didn't have a target forward of uh, the centre circles. But the other game interests me, Purple. Uh, Melbourne... Did what they had to do against Adelaide, but they might be as infuriating a team to watch as there is in the comp because they they succeed despite themselves, Melbourne, to me. They, they, they've they got so many good things about what they do, mm. but then by foot they slaughter the ball better than any team nearly playing mm. and they yep. cost themselves you know, scoring opportunities on the back of it. Yeah, they did. Um, I think the, the, the mental weight of that game last night, they... they... <laughs> They, they wouldn't have been allowed back to Melbourne even when they are allowed back to Melbourne if they'd lost that. So it would have been a, an absolute line yeah. on their season. And I, I, I sort of um, feel for them in that regard, um, which I think was why it took them so long to, to then get on that role in that last quarter. They, they just set up and played in a way that had them – you know, in front comfortably at three quarter time, and then I think the um, the release valve was was there then, and they took it away. But I certainly hear what you're saying, Jim. I mean, they've got talent, as we saw a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago now, where they they could actually get on a roll that uh, results in a in a similar outcome to what happened in 2018. But I, I'm with you. I, I think they um, they're their own worst enemy. The way they um, the way they do butcher it, and and the way they just cannot bear down a proper structure, despite having players they've brought into that team um, since 2018, mainly in, in the back line in, in Lever and May. 
Oh, mm. The bit that infuriates me, Fat, is when you watch them, you can hit pause so many times and you just look at the ball carrier and you go, right, there are three screaming options that mm. should be taken here and they don't take any of them. They just pump it long, wobbly down the line and yeah. I just look at it. It so often happens with Melbourne and it, because they're... You know, to use that hackneyed modern phrase, they're this see ball, get ball midfield. So they just all go charging in and they grab onto it. And, the, and then the composure just evaporates and they just hack it forward. Mm. Um, the good oh, sides yeah. just find them so easy to play against, I reckon. Be hard to play f- up forward, you know, mm. those yep. young boys that got up forward. Imagine that. Mm. But um, also, Damo, I believe you've got some breaking news for us here on the Rush Hour. It's probably not so much breaking now, Bill. It's fresh news. How about fresh news? Fresh. Um, oh. Round 13, I think you're referring to, Bill, is yes. it? Or, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, there's going to be a second game in Darwin. We've known now for some time that the the Dreamtime game, the Essendon, Essendon and Richmond game, would, would be played on the Saturday of that round. That's Saturday, August 22. There's a, a secondary game at the same stadium, TIO Stadium, uh, to be played on the Friday to open mm. that round. It's going to be Gold Coast and Carlton. It's all part of the Sir Doug. Nichols round that um, will acknowledge yep. and honour all the Indigenous uh, participation throughout the uh, history of the game. So I, I like the fact there's a, a second game up there, Bill. Um, and what they've also done with that scheduling, Bill, as we know, rounds 9, 10, 11 and 12 comprised of 33 matches to be played in 20 days. That is to conclude uh, on Monday, August 17. There's going to be a three-day break. So you can get your sleep Ooh. in there, Bill. Yeah. Take a breath. The Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of that week will be football free before that round 13 fixture kicks off on the uh, the Friday, August 21. And I think they'll probably just drip feed uh, round by round um, after that. I think they'll uh, reduce produce round 14 and probably about this time next week and then just do 15 and 16 and then maybe reset before yep. uh, a round 17 and 18 block. All right, let's get back to that game last night because uh, no, we know on a death ride any footy club on this uh, segment because uh, we're positive. But uh, Adelaide, <laughs> are they in danger, Purple, of replicating Fitzroy's uh, lamentable 1964 season where they went all the way through without winning a game? Yeah, look, I think they – well, they, they are. I mean, they've now gone 10 games into a 17 17- game season without a win. Um, strangely enough, that the closest they got to, to a first win was that very first game. Matthew Nix's first game way, way back before the, the COVID-19 yeah. shutdown back in round one when they lost to the Sydney Swans at home by, by only three points. And it was quite a competitive game, if you recall. But since then, uh, they've had a, a narrow loss to Essendon, but every other game has been pretty ordinary for them. And, and they've still got some, some bigger clubs still to come. Like, I'm just going through the 10 they've played. Collingwood next week. Uh, Collingwood's not there. Yeah, Collingwood has, has yet to yet to come. They've played West Coast, Brisbane, Bulldogs. Geelong, and Port Adelaide, you know, who are going to be premiership uh, considerations. But, yeah, the Bulldogs are another team that they're yet to play. So, uh, it's a worry, isn't it? Um, and, and and what and sort of what we touched on the Saturday rub last week, wasn't it? I think it was B2 who raised it. The, um, the morale of the teams that are struggling. Now, they're not in a hub existence, Adelaide, but but the, the morale of a, of a team that, that has got no hope from a finals perspective with, a, with still a seven-match run at it, it's um it, it's a long seven matches. And you, you do feel for Matty Nix right now, don't yep. you? You really you do. do. Well, just having a look at that, uh, 1964 Fitzroy... Played 18 games, 0 and 18. In 1963, the year before, Damo, they won one game out of 18. Uh, then in 65, they won four. And then in 1966, they won one game out of 18. Bill, so, you don't have to oh, tread all over our beautiful <laughs> Fitzroy fans who are just remembering Jim, gloriously. They won about three games in four years. Back having then. Gary Pert running around for them and Paul Ruse and, uh, and, and Lynchy. And the, you don't need to you know, remind them of the poor years. Jim, you ask him. You ask him now. I don't reckon we can. I think we've got to uh, just... Okay, before we get to that, uh, <laughs> we've seen that Warren Treadray come out very hard, uh, Purple, about yep. the uh, schoolies for grown-ups. The, uh, <laughs> the AFL hub a major worry. And, you know, when he speaks, people listen to uh, Warren Treadray and he said these people uh, up at the hubs have got to start sucking it up and realise how lucky they are. Yeah, I, I, I'm. Look, it's easy to say that from the outside looking in, and that's that's the view I take too. But you you speak to the people who are living at gym, and particularly the teams who are struggling, and individually and and team wise. And I can I can understand the the pull that has descended over some of those people up there. But yeah, to to, to Warren's point, um, the privilege that it is to actually be able to still do your craft in a in a state that isn't um stuffed as as the one we're living in right now is Victoria. So I get all that, and the. Look, I think the, the, the cumulative effect of, of the players' requests for, 
the situations Ooh. and um, yes. people and diets and and even room restructures that has, has happened has has got to the point where they, they've just had enough. And I also get now too that they they're forcing the players to streamline their requests through uh, one person at their club, which probably is how it should have been in the first place. And maybe some of these direct phone calls that Gill himself has got from some uh, some big name <laughs> players to to change things in the hubs uh, may not have happened. I well, have a view, Purple, that leadership has never, ever been more important in footy clubs than it is this season. And it's my yeah. understanding that a few of the clubs that have handled hubbing really well, and I'll put the Fremantle Dockers in that bracket, um, a lot of that's come from the senior players. Uh, David Mundy, uh, Nate Fife, when they were up in the hub, apparently were absolutely superb and just grabbed the young blokes and said, listen, you blokes, yep. to Warren Treadray's point, you're lucky to be here. You're lucky to have a job. This is an amazing experience. You look back at the end of your careers and say, remember 2020 when we had a month and a half up on uh, the Sunshine Coast or wherever they were. So it, I think you can either be well-led and that can be the message and everyone falls in behind it and hubs well, or... If you're not as well led and your leaders are, you know, leading the cry for woe is me, then the rest of the club can follow down that path mm. and uh, y- your issues arise. Yeah. Oh. And, and it's sort of to the point that um, I was making before, Jim, uh, in, in a straight footy sense too, when it comes to Geelong and the older players being able to deal with the, the unknown about um, this season and still what lies ahead. Uh, that, that's that's why I'm sort of placing greater weight on those mm. older experienced players. I, I wasn't sure how it was going to play out once we um, had this shortened season, um, both in, in matches played and, and time per quarter. Once those, I was thinking for what it's worth that it might have been beneficial to the younger players with the fresher legs and even the fresher minds. But I reckon it's still becoming a marathon, isn't it? In fact, it's it's arguably as big a marathon as it, as it ever has been because of the mental weight that, that's applied. So, yeah, to, to to your point, to Warren's point, to the to the point that Nat Fife and, and David Mundy, as you were saying, were delivering, it's um it, it's going to become key. Yep, it is. Just looking at Fitzroy from 1962 oh, to 1969. <laughs> that's eight years, Jim. They won 16 games. Oh, Bill, 16 <laughs> games in eight years. Why Come on, would you, chicken why small would you, horn? Or why would you drag him? <laughs> the chicken was back in the 30s. Why would you drag fantastic Fitzroy supporters back through that, oh, Fat? Jim, they it's still 16. my all-time second favourite team, Bill. Oh, mate, 16 the games Royce. in eight years. <laughs> Hey, hey, North, um, didn't have, North didn't have many more wins than that in, in a similar period of uh, yeah, time, they, too, I reckon, Jim. Right, the 50s and 60s went great. Right. Now, 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 now Purple. Yeah, come on, Purple. What's what, been going what, on, mate? I wasn't aware. And you know, I don't miss too many media <laughs> stouches. Uh, my nostrils flare when I hear one-on-one in our industry because uh, when they happen, Bill, we just, uh, we, well, we just listen up and see what's going what. on. We sit back and listen, oh, and then we record, geez. and, and, and then, then we listen again, and we listen again. But and you Whispy, stoke it up uh, again. Uh, Tim Watson, otherwise known to everyone as Whispers, has uh, given you a nice clean back and sides, called you the voice of trees and purple. Trees? What does that Get mean? Us, what does that I, mean, I, Bill? I, 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 I'll explain up, what we're talking about here, please. Where did all this happen? Where did it start? Uh, it is very much tit for tat, isn't it? And, and schoolboy and schoolyard sort of uh, type of responses. He, he had a crack at me, Jim. I think it was Monday. I then had a crack at him on Tuesday, and he had right. another crack at me on Wednesday. And I'm thinking, what do I do here? Another crack back, no, or just draw the no, line? No, no, no more. That's it. No, no, yeah. I, I, I'm saying that. Um, yeah, look, it, it's look, it's become a a byproduct of this uh, this debate that um, people from uh, outside uh, the media were, were having mm-hmm. about the independence of media outlets. And I think you both know my views. There is no independence in media, no matter which organisation you're referring to. The one we're talking on right now, Triple M, or even the ABC. So I've never had the view that there is an independent outlet. It all stems back to uh, Mitch Cleary um, uh, being mm. um, being reviewed by the AFL. And as I said in that podcast where I did have those critical words of Tim, um, the AFL was right to, to review his position, as Mitch Cleary, as a journalist, was was initially right to, to, to actually consider doing what he did with that post. But ultimately, Mitch Mitch shouldn't have done that. Um, it wasn't World War Three. He was quickly reinstated after it was uh, dealt with properly. And, and the AFL was right to, I suppose, enforce the edict that he'd had um, in its staff and our staff of, of, of not to mention the, the partners of the, the players in the hubs. Yeah, I, I get that, Purple. But for me, and I'm able to say this because I have no alignment with the joint at all, um, yep. to stand him down was very heavy-handed. It's it, it, All they needed to do was grab old Masai, who we all know, Masai. and pull him aside and say, yeah, mate, we would have preferred this to be the way you handled it. And, um, yep. you know, and then, then you march on. But I think the... 
now this is not, nothing to do with old whispers and what he's saying, but I think the hue and cry came because it did seem to be a heavy-handed reaction to what had happened. Yeah, look, and I hear you, Jim. And, and when I was made aware of it after I got off air on Friday of the Friday huddle last week, um, yeah, I, I, I needed to get to the, the bottom of just to get my own head around it. And look, again, there's always nuances. There's there's complexity to it, which, yeah, I'm never going to broadcast when it comes to the private conversations. But there was a situation at play that was was very different to it, to it being a simple media um independence issues so i just again without boring our listeners with that aspect of it but yeah back to your point with um the wispy situation it probably got a little bit out of hand uh, from, from both yeah. of us i reckon All right, so are we are we gonna have, is it gonna be a phone call between yourself and whispers are we gonna is there gonna be a rapprochement <laughs> what was that Even, i don't know that one jim a, <laughs> a, a coming together uh no Ooh. No, I don't think so. Nah. Did, well, and you did. No, we, we don't. We're not. We've known each other a long time, but we've never been um, tight. Which is probably the reason this uh, this week has unfolded the way it has been. But uh, no, I don't think. Sometimes you don't need to patch him up, Jim. If given there was oh, nothing, yeah. um, you know, yeah. to begin with. So right. you well, did support Mitch, didn't you, uh, Damo? Because knowing you and you do like Mitch, you've taken him on. He's like a son to you. Actually, when you look at Mitch, he looks like you. <laughs> or <Poor> bugger. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, of course, I support him, Bill. I mean, as I said, when I came off here on Friday night, it was the first call I got was from him. And um, obviously between Friday and, and, and Monday, we're talking almost on an hourly basis to, you know, to, to see what had happened, what he yeah. did and, and what he then had to do. And, and what he did do was, was concede. He did something that um, in an ideal world he wouldn't have done. And, and look, it's not the biggest deal of all time. But um, yeah, 20 But as you said, yeah. the journos love this one. The footy fans don't really care, do they? But the, they all care, the journos Bill. No. out there, don't they love it? They couldn't care. They, they could not care. And... Uh, yeah. Well, and AFL fact- media <laughs> is not high on a lot of the journalists, uh, you know, Christmas card list purple because uh, they see them as competitors and run by City Hall. So that's where that I, all comes from, surely. I, I think you've hit the uh, the nail on the head as to why this uh, one took off, Jim. Um, but <laughs> again, just to be defensive of my own organisation here as one of the ones I do work for, Jim, it's no less independent than any other media outlet out there. If I could just have that little political statement right at the end. I'm putting this on the table. I, I, I've tried with no support to have Bill sacked for 10 years. Yeah, and and exactly. when I finally succeed, there will, I won't be coming out publicly and supporting him or saying anything. But it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> Fat, and I'm saying that in front of you. I know, but you shouldn't say that because one day, someone in the chair is going to go. You know what? He's right. <laughs> and you know what they'll do then, Jim? They'll, they'll, uh, and Bill, they'll then re- yeah. go, go back to this very conversation today on uh, August, what is it today? August, yeah, uh, you help me out, Thursday, is. August 6th. Yep. Six. J- James Brayshaw at, uh, what is it, 3.18pm, mm. uh, yep. said this about you, Bill. So it was a that's long it. time coming. No doubt. The, the and, uh, I, and at that time, I'll say that's exactly what I said. <laughs> uh, a bit similar to stealing the chocolates during the Saturday rub fat. If you oh, declare right. you're doing it, it's not yeah. stealing. Now, Fitzroy, they... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Laurie Serafini, who would have been yeah, playing then? Give, give us some players from the mid-60s. For yeah, Kevin Murray. Kevin, Kevin Murray's Murray winning his brown lace, wasn't he? He used to wear the seatbelt. He, he pulled the seatbelt out because he had a freshly um, ironed shirt. A uh, little yeah. chunky... M- Mick Conlon. Oh, Mickey Conlon. Sorry, oh. I thought you were still talking about Laurie Serafini. No, Mick Conlon he's a... used to drive along yeah, with the, with the, sh- uh, yeah, the seatbelt so it wouldn't increase the shirt. That's well, more, his chest uh... was bulging out into the seatbelt, wasn't it, Bill? <laughs> it was. But that's more, your 80s, uh, that's more your 80s setup, I would have oh, thought. Right, but I, I want you to tell me who was playing in the 60s for uh, the Roys. Give me, give me some players playing back then. Where do I find them? Hang on. <laughs> well, you've got the, the book, in. book in front of you. But they're, they're not in the book anymore. There's three men. No, they are, Bill. They're up part. Uh, if you go to the book, if you've got the book, they're, yeah. they're beyond West Coast. Uh, oh, sorry, the Bulldogs. Yeah. <laughs> so, Come on, Fat. We've got time. We're, we're uh, podcasting. Do we? So we've got Here time. We go. to f- All right. I'm going to give you some. Kevin Murray was winning those uh, best and fairest back uh, in that period of time, Bill. He right won the best right. and fairest in 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. Uh, Gary University. Lazarus. Gary Lazarus was running around. Billy Johnny Steven, Murphy, 1968. Ro- uh, Jeff Billy Doubleday. <laughs> Ron Fry. <laughs> John Murphy, the father of. John Newnham. So Gary, <clears throat> Gary Lazarus was winning the goal kicking. Uh, Dave, Harvey uh, da- Merrigan. Daryl Peoples. <laughs> Gary Wilson, Johnny Booth. the flea. <laughs> Robert Walls was the coach. Uh, Matty Walls Rendell. Of course. No Not then he was uh, Ross uh, Thornton. David Wall. John no, Murphy. That's later. Oh, right. uh, Johnny Murphy. Barry, yep. Barry Padley. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Searle. 
That's Harvey who? Merrigan. Dude, Harvey, yeah. Harvey. Harvey Merrigan was there. Paul Shanahan. Come on, fat. I, I don't want you putting any more shit on Fitzroy from this era. I think they, they were doing it hard enough. They had a very ordinary era. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Duckworth. Jeez, they got some names, haven't they? Uh, well, no, yeah, thank you, Bill. Gary Wilson, of course, uh, came a little bit later. I don't. A little bit later, Jim. Yeah. Uh, David McMahon, an enormously skinny. A little man. bit later. A little bit. A later. little bit later. No, well, I'm starting to now wander into a, an era where people. Graham Allen, actually, Laurie's you know brother. what was there going on. Ronnie Alec, big rough yeah. Ronnie Alexander. Yeah. Ronnie's brother. Scotty, uh, uh, Scotty Clayton. Yes, yeah, Scotty Clayton, Mickey Conlon, the one you've already mentioned. Uh, Grant Laurie. Oh, now we're oh, the great, the super boot, uh, Bernard Quinn, uh, Quinlan, okay. Leon Harris, oh, Bob, Jimmy Fagencroft. Stop putting shit on them. These are legends of the comp. I know. I love them too, Jim. I love them. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Damo, you better go. Well, right. Damo, good, before good we let you go, anything else uh, by way of news we need to prize out of you? Uh, I think the, the match tonight, Collingwood Sydney, has got a bit mm. of news in it uh, and around it. If indeed the the pies don't get back on the the winners list, as we know, they're they're four and a half wins from the uh, the the nine matches they've played to this season, leaving them exactly split bill. So, yeah, need to get back on track, don't they? And it won't be as easy as I think as some people do think that the, this game against the, the Swans is a danger one. And then the second the one got some interest too, St Kilda and uh, the Gold Coast Suns. The Gold Coast Suns, yeah. an interesting watch. The other, Just getting back to Melbourne, the other thing we can't uh, forget, Purple, is they play North next week, I think, yep. or next game. Uh, they win that, they're 5-5. Five and five. And, Yeah, and I know. In this season, that's still a very live chance. Yeah, and they've got Collingwood the week after that in, in, in round 12 um, at the Gabba. And just on the back of this round 13 being released today, they've got the Western Bulldogs then. So they need to win that game against yeah. North, don't they? Because Collingwood into the Western Bulldogs in rounds 12 and 13, we'll know by then, won't we, where, where that club is at. But if they can fluke one of the Collingwood or, or Western Bulldogs game, um, they'll, be, uh, they'll be okay placed, I would think. Because uh, they've got that game much. up their sleeve. They've got that game yeah, up their exactly. sleeve, as you know. Exactly. Um, so, so they've got that bonus, that Essendon game that was postponed from round three for Connor McKenna reasons. That, that's in their, in their keeping at this stage. Yep, if they can tidy just a couple of things up, they're, they're, you never know with uh, the Melbourne Footy Club. Purple, great catching up with you. Thanks for that. Cheers, boys.